Hello and thank you for watching. Today's video is going to be over data and graphing and it's going to be an introduction on how to graph dot plots. So when we're discussing data and graphing, you need to know that data represents information. It's information that you're looking at in math class. And graphing represents organizing that information. So when you graph information on a dot plot, you're putting information together in an organized way. Now dot plots use dots or symbols to represent a data set, but you don't always only see dots or symbols. You can see pictures. Dot plots are very similar to picture graphs or pictographs, and dot plots can look many different ways. Let's look at some of the ways you may see a dot plot. So here is a very basic dot plot. As you can see, you have a title, and this dot plot is about the number of books read over summer break by students. And a really important part of dot plots is the key. You have to pay attention to the key. The key is going to give you helpful information so that you're reading the graph correctly. And in this case, I see that the key is telling me that one dot means one student. So um, when you look at your dot plots, you need to pay attention to what each dot represents. The other parts of the graph that you really need to pay attention to are the labels. So I see that my books read over summer break is my title. Number of books read at the bottom is a label and that's telling me that these numbers represent the number of books read. The describing words, pay attention to those, and number lines. Dot plots have number lines. That's a big part of reading a dot plot. So in this case, the number line here starts at zero and it goes to nine or more. So if I'm looking to see how many students read one book over the summer, I will look at this column. Each dot represents one. So when I count the dots, I know that 11 students read one book over the summer. Now, it's important to know on dot plots, if you don't have a key, if there's no key on the dot plot, then you're safe in assuming that every dot means one. Let's take a look at another dot plot. Here's one where you don't necessarily have dots, but you have circles. And let's look at those labels and describing words. I see number of pets is my title. Number of pets at home are the numbers below. Here's my number line. And so let me see what my key tells me. The key is telling me that every time I see a circle, that represents four students. So when I'm looking at this dot plot, I'll count each of these symbols by four. Let's look at another dot plot. On this one, you see that your uh, dot plot is about student heights. The heights are measured in feet, and you have decimals on this dot plot. You're going to be reading dot plots with decimals. You'll see that this number line starts at three and it goes up to five. And so you see the number of students who were three and five tenths feet tall were three. Let's look at one more dot plot on this slide. And this one is also read using fractions. You're going to be reading dot plots that include fractions. And this one, you can see, is counting by halves. So it starts at zero and it ends at five and each increment is counting by halves. Let's look at a few more examples and remember to keep these things in mind whenever you're looking at dot plots or graphs. Here is a dot plot where it's not dots at all, but it has stars or symbols and you see your number line and you have money represented counting by tens at the bottom. On this dot plot, you see that you don't have dots at all, but you actually have pictures. And this one is about coffee consumed and you have pictures of coffee cups. And here's your number line and the range. So the number of ounces consumed by teachers are zero to five and six to 10. So that's how that number line is counting. Another uh, example of a dot plot that you may see is this one. Now this one stands out because the dots are not moving bottom to top or vertically, they're moving left to right or horizontally. So you'll often see dot plots where the dots are moving bottom to top, but you won't always see those. In this case, this one has the dots moving left to right, and it's also missing some information. You're missing information on this dot plot, so you may encounter some of those. And then one more example of dot plots that I'd like for you to see is this one. It's similar to the one I just mentioned. As you can see, your dots are 
um, x's and you have a number line moving up and down and zero is moving across this way. So this is about tardies and my key tells me that every X represents four students. So the number of students with zero tardies are in this row right here. So these are just some examples of dot plots you might encounter. So let's answer some questions using a dot plot. The fourth grade teachers at Jollyville Elementary asked several students how many pets they have at home. The teachers recorded the number of pets the fourth graders had on a dot plot. Use the dot plot to answer the questions below. Record your answers in the blank box next to each question. So let's take a look at our graph. Now remember to pay attention to those labels and descriptors. The title is the number of pets. My labels at the bottom tell me number of pets at home and that means zero is zero pets at home, one is one pet at home, two is two pets, and so on. Now remember I told you to pay close attention to that key. I tell my students to make the key stand out. If we don't have the key correctly, then we won't answer the questions correctly on the graph. So the key tells me that every time I see a circle, it represents four students. So let's label this graph before we even get started with these questions. Now, this graph has circles that represent four. So the number of students who have zero pets is four, eight, 12 and I see a half of a circle. So if one whole circle equals four students, then a half a circle must equal half of four is two. So the number of students with zero pets is four, eight, 12, and then I'm gonna add that to that's 14. The number of students with one pet at home, if I count those, I'll see it's 32. The number of students with two pets at home, this looks like my highest number, is 44. The number of students with three pets at home is 26. Four pets at home is 16 as I count those, and five or more pets at home, how exciting. That's eight students. So now I'm ready to answer my questions. Number one, how many students don't have any pets at home? That means zero pets, and I know that was 14 students have no pets at home. Number two, how many students have one or two pets? So on questions like this, you have to look at more than one piece of data. One pet was here, and that's 32 students. Two pets was here, and that was 44 students. So I have to take 32 plus 44 because it represents one or two pets and I'll let you do that on your own that's gonna give me my sum and my sum is what I'm looking for here so let's go to number three how many students have more than three pets you're going to see questions like this a lot so I need more than three not including three but more than three and I like to do things like this to put a bracket around the data that I'm looking for so here would represent more than three. And I know that that's 16 students and eight students. So when I add those together, I get 24 students have more than three pets. Let's look at number four. How many pets did most students have at home? Well, that one's an easy just observation. Which one of these has the highest number at the top? And that's going to be your answer. And number five, we kind of answered this already. What does the symbol, and here's your symbol right here, what does that symbol mean on the dot plot? Well, I looked here before and kind of wrote out some notes that if a whole circle equals four, then half of a circle must equal two. So this symbol on this dot plot equals two students. I hope this video over dot plots was helpful. If you'd like to see my other graphing videos, please like and subscribe to my channel. And if you're interested in any of the products featured in this video, please read the description box below. Thank you for watching.